I'm Tam. And I'm Eternally Mortal. And this is the Hidden Egg Podcast, where we talk about vulnerability. And stuff, and things. And I have this new, well, it's not a new website, but I have revamped the monsteralley.com website. I just wanted to put that early in so that people heard it before they clicked away. That was all. <laughs> yeah, check out the mon <laughs> themonsteralley.com. It's uh, been revamped a little bit, and uh, it looks great. Check it out. It's awesome. <clears throat> okay, so first things first. Um, we uh, were not able to do last week's episode um, for reasons, but technically if you're just following along on Spotify, you won't even notice really, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, if you come to it later. If you're listening to us live, first of all, thanks. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, we were off last week uh, doing a little bit of self-care, taking care of ourselves through a little bit of a downtime, but we're back and going to react to a couple of articles and uh, showcase some vulnerability. So are realness. you... Are you ready for article number one? Yeah. Do you know which Pretty one that's going to be? Uh, have you decided which one that's going to be? I have. I have it. Uh, yeah. I then have an order surprise, for them. Surprise me. Or do you want me to guess? Um, I can just surprise you. It's fine. It's, it's okay. the I'm not attracted to my overweight wife anymore article. Ah, uh, yes. Which is one of the few that don't have a picture that I am like, yeah, this is actually pretty pretty good. I usually like a picture. Everybody likes a good picture, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one didn't um, really need it, in my opinion. Do we... I don't know if we have up to this point, but do we want to just, like, shout out the name of the writer? Yeah. Um, this was written by Dr. Samantha Rodman Whiten, a.k.a. Whitten. Doc... Is it Whitten? It could be either could one. could be Whitten. Uh, a.k.a. Dr. Psych Mom on Medium.com. Yeah. And it seems like uh, Dr. Psych Mom is, a, is kind of a social media presence for this person. And so, you know, check them out. This was a really interesting article that uh, examined the vulnerability of someone else, actually. Yeah. So I I already know how I feel about it. And I've already talked with um, one of our mutual friends about, about how I feel about it. I want to know what you think about it so that I don't taint your perspective. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I definitely had, for, I guess for context, um, in case you haven't read the article, of course, um, there is a, uh, it's an article, it, 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 it basically is a showcase of a, I don't know if it was a, a, a question letter or whatever, but it was a, a man who is no longer attracted to his wife because she's gained weight. And so that's pretty clear from the title, I guess. And I struggled with the idea of a person that you love like losing that love any part of that love any any like any little like the lust part of that love because of a change in body structure but i know it, it certainly does happen it's a real thing that real people experience certainly and this person the the writer i can't remember her name anymore i just scrolled past it um dr psych mom um was really understanding in her response i thought it was amazing Truly, um, in her response to it, should I just continue? I feel like I should let you talk if I need, if you need to. Um, I was just gonna say Ben said something about um, that he's actually gone through that. I assume you weren't the one that was overweight. No offense, you just don't look like a guy that's been overweight. <laughs> maybe, maybe long, long ago. I guess that's always possible. But um, yeah, I, I think I think there's been other people that have had similar experiences i'm not telling you my 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 opinion on it just yet i want to i want to get to the end of your thing but but ben's statement uh basically i wish beauty standards didn't get to me but they do and i think that's pretty common it if is i'm being honest like i fight myself to try and and love everyone for who they are but i absolutely like if I see a person that adheres to the beauty standards that just live in my brain, then like I'm immediately attracted. I immediately want to make them smile if I can't, if I can have any chance of doing that. Um, so I think everybody to a certain extent does um, just reading about it, like through me for a little while. But like I said, uh, um, Dr. Psych mom was really understanding and uh, 
there's some I don't want to get too much in the weeds of like saying every aspect of the article, but like, you know, there's some trauma that led to that position for this gentleman and I got it. And her response I thought was really well thought out and um, compassionate to both people. I still feel like the, the overweight wife might just feel attacked from some of this. And so I, I, I worry about that sort of thing, but it's not really like who, gives a shit what I think honestly that's why we're um, here is that's, that's literally what we're listening to is what you think yeah I guess that's why we're here that's true hey how's it going um <laughs> but but yeah I, I mean I don't know that the the overweight wife is going to read Dr. Psych Mom's article to to get any sort of reaction from it but like that's that's what I look at when I see it is is how it pertains to everybody you know what I mean <laughs> and we so so yeah ben's we all had to pause so ben <laughs> said sometimes i feel like some people who say they're oh, sapiosexual are lying to themselves a little it's rare to be attracted to someone who's truly hideous from what i've seen and i i, I would agree are you are you finished uh with with your opinion i don't want to like cut you off if you're still no in i feel like expressing i feel it. like i've I feel like I've expressed a good deal of the general feeling that I have for the article. Go ahead. Okay, because this is a good segue into mine, and I, I think the doctor is 100% spot on. Um, and she's gotten a lot of flack for it. Basically, she was telling him that, like, he doesn't get to control what he's attracted to because none of us control what we're attracted to. It's... It's one thing to say if he's like going out of his way to shame her, then yeah, that's wrong. But it's another thing entirely to suggest that if she gains weight, he has to somehow change this fundamental part of who he is and what he's attracted to, regardless of the fact that she could just lose the weight. And I'm not saying that she has to lose her the weight. If she's happy with that, with who she is in that body and that's what she wants to be, more power to her but that does not give her the license to try to change him either like this might be a case where they now are no longer compatible yeah and i think i read in there that they're separated or whatever and maybe that is the right path absolutely because you know you i do i, I would want people that are in a partnership of that sort to be attracted to each other you know in multiple ways including physically um there's definitely like some people that i've seen that were over 80 and still loved holding hands and cuddling with each other. That's a physical intimacy that still exists, even though they're, you know, 80 and not necessarily up to beauty standards of today. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I'm technically overweight, right? So sure. I don't I don't know if I'm obese. I don't know that that's the, like I, if I am, I'm on like the very like percentage wise. I'm on the very tip of it maybe but i know i'm definitely overweight my doctors have been telling me I, I need to lose like 20 pounds or something um so i i it hits me in the same way that it would hit the wife i'm terrified of somebody like my, my partner being like yeah i just don't find you attractive anymore but i don't find that to be a him problem it's not like we we actually discussed this when we started dating where he had an obese partner and she was abusive and even before her abuse he had he like pushed himself to act like he was attracted to her because he didn't want to feel like he was too superficial and like we we talked in the beginning of our relationship and I'm like if I ever get to that point we shouldn't be we shouldn't be having sex like I should be working on whatever it is that's making me obese at that point it's not an us problem it's a me problem and that like that might if that breaks our relationship then we'll try the best we can but like never once did it occur to me to try to like force him to just push through it that doesn't that just doesn't make sense to me Right. Right. This guy did specifically mention that he was nice the first several times, but then became not nice about it. And so I wonder what that looks like. And that's he... fair. That is a good point. Like if he's gotten mean about it, then that might be, that's definitely not okay. 
but that might be because he had an, an ob obese mother that abused him and that could be him being triggered by her kind of kind of being in a body that reminds him of his abusive mother which isn't her right. fault right and is something that he would probably benefit from some therapy about but absolutely assuming that he's not being like a complete dick about it I mean, he might just be upset because she's trying to push him to do something that it, it says that they had talked about it before she gained the weight and that she used to understand. And then she gained the weight and now she's no longer understanding. So, like, I don't know what she's saying and doing either. I'm not going to pick sides on who's being worse here. But the, the well, I... issue about it, you know, the overweight sexuality attraction thing at its face value for me might just be a deal breaker now yeah yeah i agree it might be a deal breaker and you know if it does break that deal i do hope that they go and find other loves excuse me a second sorry um uh and in the letter there was a lot of love expressed still for the person inside the the meat suit you know what i'm saying right. And so, like, I'm glad to see that they, they seem to be, like, continuing the friendship. I think that that's delightful. Um, but we actually don't hear a whole heck of a lot about her perspective for the majority of that post or that letter that he wrote. Because the beginning, it does indeed say that she, you know, knew that it was a trigger for him, knew that he had been abused in this way, and wanted to be conscientious of that. And just let me know, to quote unquote, just let me know. And it didn't work out that way but we haven't heard what what her responses to right his pressure have been and there's a lot doctor, of things we don't know in this right and, and dr psych mom i think put, brings up a really good point in the article as well about how you know sometimes when someone feels pressured to do something from someone else it completely eradicates the ability and motivation to do that. Right. And when that pressure is alleviated, sometimes it can be a lot easier to work on it. And she said that she's like, I don't know if this person, if your wife wants to work on her weight or not, but if she does, it might be a lot easier for her to do so. If you were able to just not pressure her about it, be as nice and comfortable and relaxed as you can be and do the best you can to help her. Can I share not a, pressuring you. can I share a weird perspective that I just thought of? Oh. sure well let's 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 look at you goods thing um yeah is is he meeting her expectations i i wish we could get her angle too i just don't think we're gonna get more than what we get yeah um, and i'm in i'm I'm in the weeds go ahead <laughs> you just my my i just thought of this weird perspective that i have so you know how like there's heartthrob celebrities right there's sure. people that that society generally says are more attractive. They put them at the 10. So um, I'm going to name a name and, and, and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. George Clooney. Right? Uh, yeah. I find him to be hideous. I am not sexually attracted to that man at all. Does he mm -hmm. care? No, of course not. But my point is, I if I were in a relationship with a man that looked like George Clooney, there'd be no point. <laughs> there's nothing I could do to force myself to be sexually attracted to him. It's it's just not something I'm capable of because that's how uh, how attraction works. You 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 get a certain statistics of of what you want that you kind of have to work within. Right. Right, absolutely. And you saying that is a perfect example because it helps me, you know, see the differences in yeah. just perception. Because, like, for me, George Clooney, as a person for the last 25 years since he was on, what was it, ER or some yeah, bullshit? Yeah, was it ER? I think, I think I you're right. Remember. I think it was ER. But whatever he was on for that entire time, he has looked like a caricature. <laughs> Like a like someone drew a face and it wanted to make it look a little exaggerated and funny. So I get what you're saying. However, George Clooney has certainly delivered lines in a smooth and confident way that I've been like, ooh, mm, come over here, Mr. Oh, yeah, I like his personality, but there's something about him physically I am just not attracted to. Yeah. And I and don't I totally know what. I couldn't tell you what. 
I have no right. idea, but I do know that it is a pretty regular thing that traditionally attractive men are unattractive to me. Mm-hmm. I am more attracted to people that are are statistic like from society's view less attractive people than I am to the ones that are conventional tens. Right. And that's just preference. Yeah. Preference exists. There's some people that don't like to uh, agree about that, but um, pre- preference exists. We're all attracted to, to kind of weird or specific or quirky things. In, in and that's ways kind of that what you good was saying. It's the Riz, you know, They're, they just have right. a certain like pizzazz about their personality but even if an even if a, a traditionally attractive man had that, like George Clooney, he he has he has that kind of pizzazz going on about him. I just it's not it just doesn't do it for me. So I can understand yeah. how weight has that same effect for people, and it does for me too. At a certain point, it is beyond what I'm attracted to. I think we all have limitations like that. And some of us, like, they're all different. Some people don't like skinny people. So, like, it's not something that you can say people need to change. It's something that if you are in that group that your husband or your partner is no longer attracted to, it's it's now a a lack of compatibility. You just aren't compatible anymore. and, And I think it might be time to move on. Right. Yeah, it, I think I think I think that that's probably the case because like everybody, I mean I'm 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 poly. <laughs> I am a big believer and and attributor of polyamory, and so like I, the whole there's the whole idea that there's one perfect person out there for somebody, you know, and like I've never just never really under there's been like through two or three dozen people that I've fallen head over heels in love with in my life. And so it's just difficult for me to understand this whole like one person. And it's like people change. There's always going to be an evolution to people, both physically and mentally and emotionally. I mean, beyond that, even you have limitations to what you're physically attracted to. And I'm not going to out the one big glaring thing that I know about that you probably are, are aware of also. But I know that you have had trouble with being attracted to some people in the past. Absolutely. In ways that they cannot control. Mm Mm-hmm. That is absolutely the case. I think when we try to tell people that they deserve to be loved Mm -hmm. and that they do not deserve to be shamed, that does not include forcing everybody to be attracted to them. No, of course not. You can't force anybody to be attracted to anybody. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I know know that you kind of... You kind of had the stance of um, that they should still love their partner, even though they gain some weight. And they uh, yeah, do. Yeah, originally, yeah, originally, I was when we were talking when I started talking about it. Yeah, I str- I did struggle with that when I first started thinking about this article. But I guess I haven't. Also, I don't think I've had the experience of somebody really changing during a relationship mm. because that's really the thing because like you you know some things that we don't uh, aren't attracted to we're not going to get into a relationship with somebody and then they're going to turn into that no one that you start dating is going to turn into george clooney does that make sense <laughs> right well i mean you don't know maybe right when we you get that know. celebrity facial reconstructive right. uh surgery that just is free um but you goods you goods perspective um might be spot on too that maybe the wife hates him and either doesn't want to tell him or doesn't want to admit it herself and that might be the reason why she gained weight to like push him away it's funny that uh the last thing you had mentioned was you know she birthed his kids and now is a muffin top right because because dr psych mom the writer of this article specifically called out that you know uh she's known that dudes that are like i'm not attracted to my wife anymore because she had kids and she's like that's some bullshit i don't know what she said but you know she <laughs> said that that's not cool but like this is a this was a different situation entirely because there was you know uh, childhood abuse that uh, really spurred this whole feeling, right? But and and I'm not sure that like we can ask him to just change his trauma because she gained weight. Like it's not her fault, but at the same time, it's not his either. Like 
it's a situation that needs to be worked through and finding yeah. the fault or finding the blame is, is really just distracting, you know, right. at this point, right. Like they both have things that they need to work on. He clearly right. just needs to work on his trauma for himself. I don't know if that's going to make it to where he becomes a, you know, person that's into larger women. I have no idea if that's what would, would change for him at all, but like at least address the trauma, regardless of what the outcome is. Exactly. <laughs> And if she's gaining weight for negative reasons, the depressions or anxieties or agoraphobia or any anything else that is going on that might be causing this weight gain, then those things need to be addressed and the weight gain will come with it if that's a thing. But if she's just even if it doesn't, life, even if the weight loss, like even if she doesn't lose the weight through like getting therapy for these other things, she'll still be better off. And if the relationship's over she'll definitely be way better off because she will be kind of more secure in her own body right and that's the goal for her I, we don't even know if that's what she might love her body and if she does more power to her fantastic that's amazing go for it but like it, that's really the goal at the end of the day is that whatever she's doing with her body as long as she loves it in my opinion and yeah Abuse is subjective. So True. we should we should probably move on to the next one if that's okay. I don't want to like abruptly change topics, but I don't uh, know if there's jam. much more we can say about this one. No, no, no. And you know, it got us into thinking about how we perceive life, and we shared that, and that's amazing. Let's move on. Okay. So the next one is by our our native writer. You good? I can... Fellow monster, fellow P. You I, good? I can feel her uh, her cheeks burning now. Ah, it's fine. Um, you good wrote uh, an article called "To Celebrate a Lifetime of Being Fine," which I was delighted to read twice, actually. Um, and uh, do you want to do you want to launch into the early soliloquy this time, or shall I do it again? Oh, did you do it last last time? I don't know. I I feel like I always do the things so i've been trying to like step aside <laughs> so that i'm not always talking well you asked me what i felt about the previous article yeah that's kind true, of went into that's a true. well that's because i didn't want to like form my opinion yeah, yeah and i feel like i changed <laughs> your mind there in the middle <laughs> so i i feel like it was the right call maybe but, yeah i can i, I can, can... kind of go go over a little bit um yeah so i'm not gonna go through all the specifics but Yuga was talking about something I find very relatable in that like you you reach 40 which I did last year she's turning 40 this year and you look at your life and you're just like what what's going on here now now her thing like it started out with with the possibility of a, a party and she you started know. thinking about like who would she even want at her party all of her friends just felt superficial and she, i don't know she worked through the the like idea that you know i don't need pe a lot of people i just need people that love me i need you know quality over quantity real people real yeah. people not that everybody not that anyone's really fake it's just that whether or not you you are in relation to the relationship you, you know what i mean yeah like and it's a I, I'm sure that it is something that affects a lot of people out there because like I feel like a lot of people in in America or in first world countries or the Western nations, whatever you want to say, through their 20s, it's just this and in teens. It's just this wild, like gathering people fest. And <laughs> some some of them are people that are have real connection to you. Some of them are just ancillary or in, incidental because of who you happen to run into in certain places. And like, you know, really looking at some of those relationships and seeing them for what, how shallow they probably are is very difficult for people to see, I think, because mm -hmm. there's a, there's potentially either a shame or a blame that's going to come along with it. Like I didn't do a good enough job to make this relationship deeper, or I'm going to blame the other person for not doing a good enough job to make this relationship deeper, you know? Right. And I think that when people look at it like that, that's what comes up. But well... If you can, you, do you want to respond to that before I before I butt it? I mean, I don't. You, okay. you, you can go ahead. I have other things to say, but I don't know that they have to do with what you're talking about. So continue. Okay, right on. I think that there's a different way to look at the relationships that we go through. You know, like that 
that they are the experiences that they are. And I'm only saying this because I don't, I, I, I don't feel like we should regret the time that has gone by, but I think that it's valuable and, and important to be able to realize where the, what the state of our current relationships are. And you good's article, I'm sorry, this would be a, a change in topic. So if you want to go next, you can, but I, I was just going to say that you good's article was so much about, about giving, about giving to people and not receiving in return yeah about constantly just justifying anything that happened to her as being you know normal or it's fine or it's whatever or it's something i can get through yeah and man was that real (laughs) my goodness i feel a lot of the underlying like i don't know that maybe she did spell it out and and i just forgot but i don't know if she did or not um but it feels like this sort of keeping up with the joneses sort of thing where all of the friend groups around you know middle age everybody's still so busy trying to make sure that they have or appear like they have the things you're supposed to have and that you're doing the things you're supposed to be doing and so the the friendships end up somewhat transactional you could like 100 mm-hmm. percent and so instead of being real instead of having meaning to the friendships it's sort of like checking off the box of you know i went to this person's birthday party i went i saw these people at the the holiday mixer or you know you know you know what i mean and right. you asked... good was kind of in the background that was that she was like really trying to connect with these people. It wasn't about the status or or making sure to check the box to her. It was more about are we friends? Like this is a, a time like this is what friends are supposed to do and we're supposed to build more, but they weren't interested in connecting and she, her her way of kind of getting through that was like it's it's fine until it wasn't fine. Yeah. And that's a it's a big moment and it's a it's a growing moment. It's a it's a moment that you you evolve a little bit as a person into something that knows a little bit more. Um, but it's painful, certainly. Yeah. I I remember fondly all of my friends from high school because when I uh, moved at the very end of middle school, I chose to reinvent myself and. I made what I felt were very close friends in high school and like, you know, we like pledged loyalty to each other in certain regards, me and several of them in in various ways. Um, One of them I was supposed to get married to if we both turned 30 and neither one of us were married. Uh, Like I cared deeply about those relationships. And when I look back, I still very much care about all of those people, but I certainly didn't put in myself I didn't put in enough effort to maintain those communications and I can certainly look back and be like I maintained a lot of those communications for as long as they did last and it was there was no effort put in from the other people too and I, it's it's sad it and is really reading sad. you reading you good's article like I kind of felt a little seen and I appreciate that greatly you remember my my like late 20s early 30s like that that was like my whole life all of the yeah. friends that i had that i thought that they were the true ones cuz they had lasted through so much already they just fell away and i was just like constantly just like i need some freaking friends i'm going insane here and i had to learn to live without having friends like i just didn't have them anymore it, yeah. it was it was really painful. We appreciate the hugs, you good. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know whether it's a natural part of growing up to leave groups of people behind, and that learning how to deal with that grief is some, you know, uh, natural human evolution. I certainly know people that have been friends with their best friends since freaking kindergarten my dad's best friend was somebody he went to high school with i do have a friend that i've had since i was 10 yeah that's right yeah that's a good that's a good friend too oh my god she's amazing but they're few and far between those are like some super gems and we fell out 
like not not that we had a like falling out necessarily but we didn't talk for like a decade yeah and i thought i had lost her forever so you know it sometimes sometimes you lose the friends and then you find them again yeah uh, and you good says uh think of how many just stay in superficial relationships for their whole lives though so many of them they just accept it and don't care maybe and maybe we care I, more than most I, I so my family seems to be like that and from what i've gathered from my family not my chosen family i mean the ones that i you know came from in childhood Grew up with. Yeah. they they seem to not believe that what friendships i have are even real they don't believe them it's like i'm telling them about unicorns literal unicorns <laughs> I, I, it, me talking about my, my friendships, they sound like they, they listen to it with the same kind of belief as you would listen to a five-year-old talking about playing with dragons in the backyard. They literally do not believe that it is possible. They think I'm delusional and a little bit insane, but that that makes me happy. And so they're fine with it cute and it's really just that people don't understand different experiences there's a lot of people well, maybe it's just people around this area maybe the midwest is rife with this but like maybe. there's a lot of people that are just like i can't trust others i'm not a, I, I'm, there's no there's no chance that i'm going to share who i really am with other people because then they'll have power over me and it's like that's that's the good stuff yeah i think that the the, the missing link there is that the right people don't abuse that power over you. No, they nurture it. They no. give you more power right. by knowing that shit. Right. If you give people, the right people, power over you, you will know they're the right people because they don't hurt you with it. At least yeah, not intentionally. They may accidentally. Everybody hurts everybody accidentally. But they don't purposefully go out of their way to undermine you, to, to hurt you, to abuse you to take the things that you have you don't have to worry about being vulnerable with them because that's the point of finding the right ones right and when they do hurt you they care that they hurt you right like, but it, it, it takes a lot of courage for people that have been hurt so many times in the past to put themselves out there enough to allow another person to hurt them and I guess I get that I mean I guess I understand it in a certain regard but it's just, it's, it's so worth the risk to me. And I don't, of course, I'm not really like reaching out in my like local community to make new friends or whatever. I feel so socially overwhelmed that maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> well, actually, but... that's a good place to segue because I don't want to like ruin the end of the article. I want people to go to you goods article and read it, but it actually does have a really uplifting solution to me. The place yeah. where, where she goes with this this realization of, of kind of digging into all of this history of like, are these people really friends and like understanding her own experience of the loss of those friendships at the very end of this tunnel is a bright silver lining and a rainbow. That's, I just, I think it's wonderful. And yeah, I think that I anybody agree. that reads it, if you're dealing with something like this right now, go out, go and read it. And see where she went and see if that resonates with you. Because I, I think it might it might be really helpful. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you. I loved this article. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was delightful. I enjoyed it a lot. So Love. usually the third article is the um, uplifting one. And the second article ended up being kind of both a little bit of the abused stuff and hopeful. So for this particular episode, I am I'm using this slot for the third article to be about my new submission guidelines for Abuse Road. Because I want people yep. to write for that particular publication and it uh i don't i don't know i don't know what to say about it i just want to talk about it and see if maybe people are interested in writing for abuse road right um and so you've posted your submission guidelines somewhere is that correct uh yes 
Yes, they're on Medium in Abuse Road. Did you want me to right. send you the link? Did you need to find it? No, no, no. I can find it. I mean, I'm currently on You Goods article, so I can just click on the pub oh, yeah. there. Um, but, but yeah. So. Uh, oh, and maybe... I feel a little bit bad about that. Sorry, before you start up, I feel a little bit bad about it because I published this after I published You Good's story, and You Good used a portrait picture instead of a landscape orientation picture. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. I'm gonna be a little a little stickler from here out, but I wasn't for that particular one. No, it's fine. It's okay. You didn't it's do totally anything fine. wrong. You good? I I didn't think about it when I published it, so that was completely on me. But then I I put it in the the submission guidelines so that from here on, please make it you know the the landscape because it looks better on the um, actual publication. No, you don't have to edit it. It's fine. <laughs> no, the picture unless you, you put want on there, to. You only the, do it if you, you want to the picture you put on there you good is just fantastic it's perfect for that perfect for that yeah you're yeah there are a lot of elements to that article that i really like but i don't want to call out every single one of them because <laughs> everyone should check out the article yeah and you can check anyway, it out yeah. through abuse road so um yeah so what i want what i want abuse road to be is hard for me to really put into words which is ironic um, but basically we're, we're kind of gonna, kind of going to feel this out together. I want it to be about abuse, but I don't want it to get traumatic. At least right. I want, I want people to be able to go here, whether they have been abused or have abused others and they're looking for change. They're looking to understand. I want both people to have a place to meet here in the middle as a sort of truce area, you know, on the edge yeah. of abusers and the abused to, to meet and talk about why these things are happening and what we want things, how we want things to be different. Because I believe more people that are abusive can be rehabilitated to no longer be abusive than we are really giving credit to. And I think doing yeah. that would help people that are being abused be less abused in the long run. Absolutely. Not in the past, right. obviously, but sorry. Right, because, because, and I think that the difficulty is going to be about, you know, dealing with abuse deals with the abuse of the past. And so those emotions are gonna be coming up at the right. same time, but, but but I love your intention to, you know, bring all of these people together and to, to communicate, to try and really openly communicate about what happened to be able to move forward with right. that. There's, right. there's so many, there's so many like uh, mythologies and phys philosophies out there that talk about how harming someone harms the self, mm -hmm. you know, like, and the, it's they were really talking about abuse. See. It's really easy to see that that is definitely the case in abuse. And you can see it very easily in the fact that the abused oftentimes become abusers. Mm -hmm. They call that abusive self-defense. Um, if you want, if anybody listening wants to know more about abuse um, from a reputable source, thehotline.org is where I get everything. I double check if I'm calling something an abuse. I will double check it through that website because they have all these different ways of saying you know this is a this is what abuse looks like this is how you can tell that it is abuse it all it all basically comes down to control but people who have been abused were put in that power struggle and they might very often actually end up feeling very insecure about what they are allowed to control what they have control over and sometimes they overcorrect when they get out of the situation where they're being abused and then they become abusive because they've overcorrected and taken more control than they should because they are still unhealed. And so they tip right. the scales from being abused into being abu an abuser. And, and I don't want to demonize people that are going through that struggle as if that's all they can ever be. Right. Right. Because change and growth is so important to realize. And 
there's no reason to continue. I'm sorry. There's no way to just give people the reason to dehumanize people and saying this is an abuser, so we don't have to care about them anymore. Right. And it's like, it's like that's not going to help anything right. because there's so many abusers out there that they when they were abused was when they were kids and so it wasn't just that they were being abused they were also learning how to treat other people and learning how to live yeah like they were learning from their parents how you're supposed to treat other people to live a life so they were learning how to protect themselves and abuse others that's what they learned because that's what the, that's the example that they were given and then they turn into abusers but that doesn't mean that that's who they have to be their whole life you, you a lot of them a lot of people that have been abusing people for decades are not going to believe it but like you can get to a point where you no longer just feel angry at everybody for ruining your life all the time i am account i, I can say that is 100 percent true not everybody yeah. will get to that <laughs> point but i i was like that that was me I was abusive. I was angry at everything and everyone for making me and my life the way it was. And one day I woke up and I wasn't angry anymore. It didn't happen like that. There was a lot of work put into it. But I'm just saying that that time can come. Yeah. It's a gradual change and an evolution of spirit. And anyone that thinks that our spirit doesn't evolve over time is incorrect. I apologize. Um, I read somewhere, and I don't remember where because it was years ago, but I read somewhere um, somebody talking about the the biggest difficulty with abuse in our society is that we don't feel comfortable. The people who are being abusive, don't, don't we can't come out and say, yes, I, I screwed up. That was abusive. I'm sorry. Because as soon as you admit that you have been abusive, you're automatically labeled as an abuser and nobody wants to talk to you. And therefore, that person who was an abuser can't heal as an abused person. They were almost invariably abused into that behavior, but they aren't, they aren't allowed to heal because, no, you abused somebody else, so we, we're not even going to listen to what happened to you because who cares? Yeah. And so when people try to talk about, oh, well, we need to focus on healing people who have been abused, they don't mean abusers. And I find that to be an oversight at the least. Yeah, because it, it doesn't just on one hand, you can look at it as they were abused. And so you're you're cutting out all of these people who were also abused and saying that they somehow aren't allowed to heal. But on the other hand, you're saying to all the people who have been abused and didn't turn into abusers that these are these people over here that did turn into abusers. You have to defend yourself against them indefinitely because they'll never change. Right. Such a good And point. you're telling people who have never been abused, hey, watch out for these people because they're never going to change. So you just have to watch out and never get affected by them. And right. that makes no sense to me when I know not all of them, not every abuser can be rehabilitated. But I don't think that it's our job to determine which ones can and can't. I believe as a society, it is our job to determine what we're going to do to help and let people help themselves as best as they can. And they will, they'll filter themselves out accordingly. Yeah. And, and that's what I want from, from writers. I want people that understand that perspective and, and want to write from that, that place. Right. And I do want to chime in because there's always a possibility that someone's going to come in and be like, oh, you're going to protect abusers, huh? And it's like, we're going to protect all of the abused. I'm not protecting anybody. I want to give them all rep representation and give them human decency. I'm going to yeah. treat them all like they're all human beings. And if anybody has a problem with that, I'm really not sure what you want out of this world. <laughs> sure absolutely <laughs> um but we do absolutely care about the the experiences and the feelings of the people that have been abused that that's a that's a thing that's happened to many 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 people and being able to share that is is important as well so we get that but that's that's a lot of places that are I mean, there's there's whole government programs set up to help people that have been abused in certain ways. You know what I mean? And there's there are places stuff. where people fall through the cracks. So I'm not going to say that's a perfect system, but this no. is something nobody's doing. Right. At least not that we've seen. Not, not nope. in a big enough 
area to make a, a dent in, in it. So we're going to be a tiny corner of the internet that maybe starts trying to make it happen too. It'd be nice, you know, just to, to put yeah. a voice out there saying, let's not dehumanize people. Right. To the best now, of our ability. Obviously, people who have been abused can still write. I'm not saying that that's not allowed. I'm just saying I don't want it to be... I don't want it to be the usual like, oh, I was abused. How horrible is this kind of story? I want it to be a thoughtful piece about this was what 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 it was like. Maybe they'll take the spin of of it being difficult to know that this was abuse and then realizing, oh, this is a this is abuse. And 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 understanding that that might be somewhat difficult to see as an abuse, which even if you're just taking it from the abused side an abuser will read that and be like, you're right. I didn't notice that was abuse either, either, even though I'm doing it to other people. I've had that response personally. Yeah. And and so, like, that's that's okay. That's fine. But, like, I don't want somebody just to be all like, oh, abuse abusers are so terrible. I, I saw this one writer. I don't remember her name, but she was very opinionated against narcissists. To the point uh -huh. where she decided that they were incapable of change and she lumped abusers and mar uh, narcissists in the same category and was pretty much just angrily labeling anybody who had even one tiny like narcissistic trait as being just irredeemable. And I'm like, I don't want that. I know that that's a popular opinion on some places. That is not what I want. Right. Because look, if you've been abused so often that you're like, I just need to have a box that I can shove people into that I can then ignore those people because I can't be hurt. any. I can't allow myself to be hurt anymore. I get it. I get yep. it. I get that that's what you're doing. Abuse you Road is not the place for you. You that's need an not, abuse parkway. You, <laughs> sure exactly <laughs> but yeah but we, we we it's not it's not okay to just hate on people it's okay to express what what would what you've experienced try not to be too traumatic or not not to be too traumatic to the reader about that of course right am i correct in that right Tam? yeah if if traumas need to be revisited i i i'm going to be reading them and making sure that like is this necessary to traumatize the reader with for the message so that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not going to say that you're not allowed to talk about the things that have happened to you. But if there's not a point to it, I'm going to say that it needs to be removed or, or downplayed or hinted at, maybe made more vague. You get the gist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of, there's all kinds, I'm sorry to say it, but there's all kinds of like abuse porn out there that yeah. you can go and read about how absolutely horrible somebody was to somebody else and it's like that i'm i'm very i i like some pretty dark media out there so it has I, its I, place i'm not saying it has, that it's bad i'm just right, saying that's not what i want place. for abuse road you can find it if you want it but right. it's not going to be on abuse road right <laughs> that's it that's really yeah. the intent there is not to is not to overwhelm readers it's to help people to think about what goes into it and to try and just help people abuse less yeah because that's that's the way we get there is and to notice what abuse it. even is right because if i'm being honest Which... that's that's at least half of the problem on both sides be on the side of being abused and on the side of being abusive half the problem is that you don't even know what abuse is yeah and then the other yep. half is not knowing what you could do instead mm-hmm Knowledge. Knowledge. Information. Yep. Sharing. Which is what I'm hoping for walking this abuse road will help us all with. Yep. That's my intent. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I hope I hope I can convince myself to to write some reactions to some Am I the Asshole Reddit posts <laughs> like you did at the beginning. Me too. Um it, and and make it, you know, as interesting as the ones you did, if not, you know, more, if I can get there. But, like, yeah, I, I hope I get that because I'm really, it seems like an interesting thing because I like to look at perspectives of all perspectives. Yeah. And sort of the thing that we used to, to do all the time. Mm-hmm. 
Anything else you want to say about Abuse Road and your new guidelines? Go yeah. read the guidelines for yourself. Go we read were kind the of all over the place. I, we I were have, kind of all over the place talking about them, but go check them out. I have a specific way for people to um, submit to being new writers. You have to read the article to find out. Um, I will, it's not in here yet, but I, I do plan on putting um, a free friend link version at the top so that people that aren't members can be uh, writers for Abuse Road also, even if they're not members of Medium. I just haven't done it yet. I. It's been a week. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. Do what you gotta do. By the time this gets put out, which I think we now do on Monday, so it'll be almost a week from now, I will definitely have done it. So. Yeah. Final thoughts? Um, no. Bye, you good. Thank you for Thanks joining. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate your time. Talk about you final thoughts. <laughs> right. Um, mostly just, you know, trying to redirect people to uh, themonsteralley.com. Yep. And if you have stories, write, uh, submit to be a writer for Abuse Road. Yes. Yes, yes. And you can uh, you can find the link to Abuse Road on the website as well, which isn't currently set up, but it will by the time this comes out. Right. So I'm working on stuff, but most of the stuff I'm working on that I'm talking about right now will be finished by the time this goes live. Nice. very confusing i know oh <laughs> i'm so cause disorganized because we're, we're releasing these on mondays now is that yeah, correct i believe so yeah sunday or yeah. monday i don't know which one do you want to do um probably sunday because i don't want to i don't want to work on it on monday i just want to mm. hit the, the the button on a day that i'm off work you know what okay. i'm saying yeah yeah so sundays maybe evening i don't know what time do you want to say i'm just gonna let Evenings. you determine that We'll just say Sunday evenings um, for now, and then maybe we'll get more direct uh, later. But yeah, we've made that decision. That way we don't push ourselves to overwhelm ourselves to do the editing and everything to get it set up. So, yep. Yep. Um, well, uh, I want to thank you, Good, and Ben Ulancey for popping by and hanging out with us in our chat for a little while. Um, both of them have had to leave at this point, but we always appreciate you stopping by and taking the time. Uh, I'm eternally mortal, and I hope you find smiles this day. And I'm the Accidental Monster. You can find us both on medium.com. Um, you can also go to themonsteralley.com and learn about other stuff that we do, like the publications on Medium that uh, we read from on these episodes. And uh, follow yourself, always. <laughs>